Hello and welcome to another presentation of the Silent Sports Video Blog. This is episode 21. Of course, today's date is August 19th, 2017. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Troy West. Of course, you're watching my YouTube channel as I'm as Silent the Assassin on YouTube. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the subscribers I've gained this week. I'm almost at 25 now, so that's the big jump for me. <laughs> It's a big jump for me. I know that's not a lot, but um, most of those people, they're real genuine people. I know a majority of them, so I thank you guys for the support. Um, of course, today's uh, blog, we're going to talk about, of course, I always touch on baseball. That's what will be first up. Um, then we'll do some NFL talk, uh, talk about the preseason games. I had my top five wide receivers in the NFL. I will share that list as well. Um, continue to count down one more week to McGregor and Mayweather step into the ring. Um, a couple of changes has happened with the gloves and stuff. I'll talk about that. And, of course, uh, been a very, very, uh, turmoil week here in this country, here in America. Um, racial divide. Of course, everybody know what happened probably by now in Charlottesville. So I'm just going to touch on that a little bit. Um, let's get my thoughts. Um, the only why I really found out about it because of the other athletes that stepped up and spoke out about it. I didn't even know what was going on until probably like a day or two later. Because I don't really watch, uh, honestly I don't really watch the news and I don't watch um, uh, like CNN, like politics stuff. I ain't really into politics, which I'll talk about when I get to that. Um, when I get to that subject, but um, let's get it started with... Of course, a little baseball, of course, um, about a month and a half left um, in the season. Um, so we look at the American League, of course, Cleveland Indians has been a team that's been impressing me. Um, starting to pull away now in the Central. Cleveland was a team I did pick to go to the World Series in my MLB preview show during the beginning of the season. So I'm looking so, sort of like a genius right now, them playing very well. Of course, I'm going to talk about the Dodgers as well. Like, that was my two teams. I still don't have a reason to change my mind on that right now. So, um, they've been playing pretty well. Um, American League East boss has still been steady. Still been winning games. They've playing the Yankees again this weekend. They beat them again last night. Um, Yankees still, still compete for a wild card. Pretty much, like I said, the majority of American League. The Orioles been playing better as well. Like my man Manny Machado went off last night, three home runs, grand slam walk off. Um, he's starting to play better. He's got off to a slow start, but he's starting to play better. I hope the Orioles find a way to keep him. Really do, but um, how those teams that are probably willing to play pay a little bit more than the Orioles willing to pay. But I think him and uh, and uh, Adam Jones, they're two key. I like Chris Davis as well. They did pay him, but. Um, He's pretty much a hit and miss. I like Mark Trumbo as well. But I think uh, the cornerstones of this team is Adam Jones and Manny Machado. So hopefully Orioles are able to keep him when it's time for him to come up for his contract. Um, uh, the American League West, uh, still Houston, even though they've sort of been up and down lately. But like I said, there's a lot of teams competing for the wild card. The Mariners, they've been playing pretty good baseball. Um, the Angels ain't too far out of either. Um, the Twins still fighting. Um, Kansas City Royals. So there's a lot of teams competing for those two wild, wild card spots. So American League will be very interesting. In the second half, well, it's already in the second half of the season, but um, from now until the end of the season, American League is going to be very interesting. Um, in the National League, of course, the Dodgers, as I mentioned, just continue to dominate. I think they had about 88 wins now. They just dominating. Then they picked up um, Curtis Granderson last night. So they just got a deep team. Like I don't see them losing at all in the playoffs. As long as they get Clay Kershaw back, he's hurt. Um, but they say he's on his way back. Of course, they picked up Yu Darvis during the trade deadline. So they're pretty much a deep team. Only team I could see them maybe beating them. I'd say the Cubs too. I was about to say the Nationals because the Nationals pitching staff, but they got injuries. Strasburg hurt. Max Scherzer got hurt. Well, they put him on the DL just last night. He was supposed to pitch last night. 
Um, but I think Washington pitching staff, they line up is a little deeper than the Cubs. But the Cubs just, but the, I guess just giving them respect because they just won the title last year. But um, they pitching staff a little bit banged up as well. Um, but I think Washington probably uh, clearly the second best team. I probably put the Cubs there. Um, Walkie still hanging in there. St. Louis Cardinals, they've been very impressive to me. Um, and just to let the cat out of the bag, I was supposed to play my MLB the show game, my live feed I usually do. I am going to do it after I record this. It will be the Indians and the Cardinals, so that's the game I'm going to call in a little while. So um, if you want to just watch a baseball game or a simulated baseball game, you can be the Indians and the Cardinals. Two teams I would do. I'm only going to do one more live uh um, play by play, probably. I'm gonna try to do a Wednesday this week. I didn't do a Wednesday last week. Had stuff going on, so that's why I prolonged it till today. So stay tuned for that. Um, pretty much, like I said, uh, lots, lots, lots of more baseball to go though. All this stuff could change. Um, I think the Dodgers like 20 games in their division, so that's not gonna, that's not gonna change. But um, them. Uh, the National League wild card started to get a little bit tighter. Speaking of the Cardinals, they're right there. Uh, Milwaukee, they they still in the in the mix. It was just uh, the three American League, I mean National League West teams. Dodgers, of course, was leading the division. Then you had Arizona and Colorado, but they sort of been straggling in a little bit. So now some of the teams in the NL is caught up with them a little bit. So I said, still a lot of baseball to go. I try to like. Like, I do a little update every week, um, touch on a few things. Like I said, the Cardinals pretty much, I was sleeping on them. I, I pretty much counted them out, thought they was done. But they right there. I actually caught the Cubs um, as far as the division. So, yeah, it's, just, it's a long way to go, though. Uh, I, think, uh, I think the last day of the season is the 1st of October. So... Another pretty much another month and a half to go, so a lot of baseball left. A lot of things could change, but as far as at the top, I don't see like I don't see the Indians slowing down. I don't see the Dodgers slowing down. Washington already wrapped up the East in the National League, so some teams already pretty much will be there unless a miracle happens. But as far as the American League wild card, that's what's going to be the interesting race um, for the rest of the season and the National League Central as well with the Cubs. And the Brewers and the Pirates, even though the Pirates been struggling a little bit, but they uh they're not too far behind either. So uh, that's my baseball update. Um, let's move on. Time to talk some NFL. Of course, preseason is full swing. Of course, this is the third week, but really the second for most teams because the Hall of Fame game count as um, a week of preseason, but. Uh, second week, like I said, the second and third weeks are the weeks that you probably really want to watch because they, a lot of the starters are played longer, like, uh, I watched, um, actually I watched two games this week, Thursday I watched the Ravens, I'm a Ravens fan, and the Miami Dolphins, uh, Ravens defense look real, real good, but, uh, Ryan Mallett don't look too good, uh, so hopefully Flacco is ready week one. Cause even though Flacco has his flaws too, but Ryan Ballard is just not good enough. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I think he had a pick six. Um, I know he had two interceptions. I think he had a pick six. I don't know. He might have didn't. But I know he had two interceptions for sure in that game. But the Ravens defense looked pretty good. I like the way the defense looked. Miami, um, uh, it was Jay Cutler's debut, of course. He, you know, he didn't play that much, so. But. I mean, he still got that strong arm. He made one throw. It was called back. He had that one strong throw to the right sideline. That looked impressive. But, um, well, he's a veteran. So, like I said, veterans, you really don't have to worry about how they look at preseason. Uh, plus, you already know where he is. But, um, I don't know the Dolphins. I don't know. I mean, they might still be the second best team in that division. But, still nowhere near New England's level. But the team that's impressed me the most so far this preseason, I watched both of their games so far, Seattle Seahawks. Like, they look very, very sharp. Russell Wilson looked good last night as he played the first half. That defense still looks stout. Um, 
Like I said, I got a big, big preview show coming up um, September 3rd, which is the week before the Thursday night opener between the Kansas City Chiefs and the New England Patriots. But um, I was leaning for us in the NFC. I was leaning towards Green Bay, but Seattle's starting to make me change my mind a little bit. Plus, they play each other, I think, week one. I think whoever wins that game could be could get home field in the NFC. So, um, we'll be very, very interested. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do more research before that um, September 3rd big preview show. Like I said, I still lead it towards Green Bay. I think Green Bay's schedule is a little bit easier. That's the only reason. But if Seattle can win that first, the opener game, and they already had the tiebreaker over the Packers. So, like, that game going to tell a lot, even though it's the first week of the season, to who will be uh, in better playoff position. So, that's just my opinion. But uh, I'll do more research on it and come up with a decision. But those are the two teams in the NFC. I'm thinking that's going to come out and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. But, like I said, you never know with injuries and other things what can happen in the season. So, and that's another reason why you can't pre- take a lot to preseason, but um, still a lot more games today. I think today is um, the big day for games. I think it's like five, six, seven games today. I think it's only two tomorrow. Um, but uh, like I said, next week will be the week you probably really want to watch your team because the the, uh, the number ones are played pretty much almost the whole game, probably all the way through the third quarter. So um, if you want to gauge what your team might look like this the next game, not this week, not this week of games, but the next game, probably be the um, time to look at your team and feel good or bad about them. I mean, you could, I, like I said, preseason is preseason, but the third game is more like a real game because the starters play most of the time. So, but, um, Some players, like uh, well, they said Cam not going to play for the Panthers today. He might not play the whole preseason because um, of injury. Uh, Andrew Luck still up in the air. Where he's, you know, is he going to be ready for week one? So it's a lot of injuries, so you might not never see your team at full strength during the preseason anyway because of injuries and stuff like that. So, but um, very interesting preseason. Like I said, it's still football. So if you like football and you still watch, I still watch the games despite it being pretty much meaningless. I still wa- like watching preseason games. Um, like I said, I made a top five list of wide receivers um, in the NFL, which. Uh, I'm going to start from number five as a name from five to one who I think is the best right now as I'm currently sitting here. Of course, this could change. Um, number five, I gave Mike Evans for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I gave him some love. Uh, it's only his third year in the league, but uh, if you look at his numbers and when he's done, um, this is a lot of, like I said, just like the running backs, this is a lot of guys I could have put here at five. Uh, T.Y. Hilton didn't make the list. Um, Jarvis Landry for the Dolphins. Um, it's a lot of guys. Des Bryant. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of good receivers in the NFL. DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is up there. Um, for as talent, pure talent wise, he's one of the best. But he didn't make my list. But I gave it to Mike Evans just because. Uh, um, just to me, like I said, I think they go. I guess it's more projected. But I think he's going to do this year. I think he's going to have a monster year this year. Now that he got Deshaun Jackson, which is another great receiver. On the other side of him, I think he's going to have a career year. Which probably rival these other four guys that I'm about to name. Um, number four, A.J. Green for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, probably the veteran out of all these guys. Um, been a little bit injury prone the last few years. But he's still um, one of the elite receivers to me. Maybe because I watch him a lot. And how he destroy the Ravens every every time they play him, but um, he's just uh, he's been doing it for a while. Or to give him some love, I think per talent wise, he definitely belongs on this list. Um, see what Andy Dalton do. He had a decent year last year. He got hurt, so um, Bengals to me, like I said, they pretty much a no man's land to me. I think they might finish at the most second in the in the North, but. Like I said, that's another thing I got to do more research on, but um, AJ Dre to me deserves to be on this list. Um, number three, Odell Beckham Jr. for the New York Giants. Some people probably like, whoa, like he should be higher, but um, 
The other two guys, I explain why they should be higher. Probably because they basically won more than him. You probably already can guess who the top two are. But Odell Beckham, of course, he got a bright future as well. Um, definitely talented, speed, um, got great hands, can take a slant route, take it to the house. Every time he touch the ball, he can take it to the house to score. Um, great leaping ability. So he has all the ability. Um, like I said, a little bit, you know, people say a little bit immature, but I take it more as him, him being passionate. Like, you know, I mean, he does some stuff um, for attention off the field and on the field a little bit sometimes, but I think it's more, I think he really want to win. So I'd rather have somebody that really want to win than somebody that's sort of like, you know. So I, I like that about him. So uh, I think he's going to uh, turn a corner. I think he'll have another big year. Of course, he got somebody on the other side of him, Brandon Marshall, another person that could be on this list. Um, so uh, look for Odell to have a big year. Um, number two, Antonio Brown for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just like I said, his just his consistency. Like out of all these guys, he's been the most consistent. Like he always gives you at least five catches. He's definitely the number one in Pittsburgh. Um, he can go over the middle. He can take you deep. Um, he has great hands. Great route. I think he's probably the best route runner out of all these guys, in my opinion. Um, just always could get open and big third down catches. He's just, and then you look at his numbers, just been consistent all year, for the last three, four years. So you got to get put him up there. Um, and again, I see, I watched him a lot because, like I said, I watch a lot of Ravens games. But, I mean, I don't think I get too much argument out of people having him number two. And number one, Julio Jones for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, just played in the Super Bowl last year. That got something to do with it, but he um, he's just a, a freak of nature. Um, athletic, can go up, get the ball, has breakaway speed. Um, he runs his routes very well. Um, he's been very consistent as well. Um, right now, he gets number one for me. Like I said, he could pretty much take any of these five guys and probably another five and have an argument for them being number one but I give Julio number one because uh, Atlanta you know they just won the NFC last year he had a big playoff showing and it's usually um, on point um, reliable and uh, I think it matters uh, what you're doing in the playoffs because uh, that's what it really counts, you know. You can have a great regular season, but if you don't show up in the playoffs, it's irrelevant. So, um, Julio Jones gets my number one spot. So, recap: number five, Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Number four, AJ Green for Cincinnati Bengals. Odell Beckham Jr. for the Giants. Number two, Antonio Brown from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Julio Jones from the Atlanta Falcons. That's my top five wide receivers. Um, Anybody disagree or agree or want to comment, definitely uh, feel free to comment at the bottom of the screen, you know, at the comment section. Um, but that's my top five. I want to like to know what your top five is. I know a lot of people probably put Obell one, probably put Antonio Brown one. Now, the top three to me, they clear. I think they separate themselves from everybody else. Beckham, Brown, and Jones. I think everybody, I think it's another probably second tier with uh, Evans, Green, Brandon Marshall, I broke up Jarvis Landry, um, Dez Bryant. I think that's a second tier right there, those guys. But those three, to me, definitely separate themselves from everybody else. Um, so that's my top five list. I'll try to come up with one more list. Um, I might do, I think I'm going to do defensive next week. Defenses. Who well, I think the top five defenses in the NFL are. I think I'll do that next week. Have a list for you guys um, for that. So thanks so much. Um, move on to boxing. Of course, we continue to count down one week until May Greta McGregor. Um, they did make some changes with the gloves. It was always controversial should they go to eight ounce gloves or whatever. They have it has been passed. The uh, Nevada Athletic Commission let them. Um, change the gloves from 10 to 8 ounces, so um, uh, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, honestly. Um, I still think uh, Mayweather is still the big flavor in this fight. Um, uh, like I said, I 
a lot of people think, I, I got a feel it's going to be an entertaining fight just because the way McGregor is. Like, I give McGregor credit. Like, he's relentless. I think he's going to come at Floyd. Um, but I just think Floyd going to pretty much counter everything he tried to do and take him down. Um, I don't know. Some people call it from uh, Floyd knockout. Maybe so. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. But I think McGregor's only shot is to knock Floyd out with a punch. But I don't want to say lucky punch, but a punch. Um, that's it. I think he ain't going to be able to outbox him. So if it goes long, then I think the judges will rule in Floyd's favor. That's just my opinion on the fight so far. Um, like I said, I was going to get my man uh, Melvin on, which I brought up a few times. But um, like I said, uh, he I guess he didn't feel comfortable, so he'll probably never come on. Two of these ready, like I said, I he knows about the um, blog and stuff. Um, but like I said, I don't want to force him. He's forcing. He's the type, like I said, he's the type of guy you try to force him there to push him more away. So, and I figured if he wanted to do it, he would he would have reached back out to me. So, um, hopefully I have him on one day. But it like in the immediate future he won't be on. But um, he has very good insight, more deeper insight than me about boxing, boxing and combat sports, so that's why I want to have him on. Plus, he's a good friend of mine, so that's why I want to have him on. He got opinions about other things in sports as well, so that's why I wanted to get him on. But I ain't want to force him or anybody ever, ever to come on. Uh, I just want to pretty much interview him on the phone, ask him a few questions about the fight. Um, but um, it's still all good. Uh, still, still my brother, so... Hopefully he's doing well. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, but yeah, we're only a week away. Uh, wish I had $100 laying around because I would buy the fight, but I'm not going to buy the fight. Um, uh, well, I might. It might be a chance I might not. Actually, uh, I'll let you guys know. I might be uh, visiting my nieces next week. And if that's the case, I'm going to do my blog on Friday instead of Saturday. And I might be able to see the fight there, but. Um, uh, it's just, like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be a spectacle. I think it's going to be entertaining. Um, I think the undercards might be more better than the uh, fight itself, but we'll see about that. Um, speaking of boxing, um, a big fight tonight. Um, been trying to, uh, do some more research on it. Um, Terrence Crawford, uh, Terrence Bud Crawford, and, um, and God, and Dago, I think it's his opponent name. Uh, they fight uh, for unification belt in the, uh, I think it's the uh, welterweight division. I think Crawford has two belts and then Dago has two belts. And they both undefeated. Um, part of top rank on ESPN, so definitely check that out. I'm going to be watching it tonight. I want to see um, that fight. It's a lot of good fights coming up in the coming weeks. Of course, don't forget about Canelo and um, Triple G. So... A lot of a lot of good fights coming up in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, check that fight out tonight if you're a boxer fan. If you're a boxer fan, you probably already knew about it, but um, I've been hearing about it, um, so I think I'm going to check it out tonight. Um, check out more preseason football. Um, so uh, a lot a lot of stuff to uh, watch tonight if you're a sports fan. Um, so I'm definitely going to check out that boxing match as well. Um, so that's it for us, uh, my week's show, uh, for us, the sports, um, uh, well, my final thoughts this week is a little bit, uh, different, usually I just touch on other things, I will touch on my other projects, but, um, I want to talk about this, uh, Charlottesville, uh, situation, and just our country as a whole, um, um, first, before I start, uh, I want to commend um, athletes from around the world and from around the league, period, basketball, football, everybody that stood up. Michael Bennett, um, Kevin Durant had some strong words, um, saying that the Warriors most likely not going to go to the White House if they're invited or not, um, which I completely understand. Um, LeBron James had a lot to say um, this week. Um, and I think he sums it up for me, um, because he says everybody got to look in the mirror and try to be better. I really believe that's the case. 
Um, he also preached about love. I think that's a big thing about it. I mean, some people, you know, I've heard some commentators and reporters say, well, uh, yeah, oh, that's just a politically correct answer. I mean, it might be, but I think it's the truth, you know. Like, all of us could be better people and um, treat our fellow man better. But I think what they, with the people that are criticizing LeBron, was saying is like, well, you need to, you know, teach people not to hate. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that's not, and maybe that's what he want to do, but like people, it, it depends on your, I guess your background for where you, how you was raised and all that. But I, I think that's a, a excuse as well, because I mean, you just, at the end of the day, you know what's right and what's wrong. Um, of course, racism still exists in this country. Um, but that's why I go back to looking at them, looking in the mirror, like, you know, uh, do you really want, like, what is your end goal? Do you want peace or do you want to continue to go to war? Um, like I said, I really, I want peace in this, and not just in America, in the whole world. So, um, you just gotta, that's why the looking at the mirror comment really, I really agree with because if you don't change the way you think, and that's what it's all about. You gotta change your mentality, how you think, or the country ain't gonna never grow. And our president's in the um, office right now. He he he's blind. He's just he's just a fool, in my opinion. He just I don't really think he know what he's doing. And and me personally, my personal beliefs, I don't follow politics, as I uh, said at the beginning of this um, broadcast. I don't. I'm not really religious, honestly, either. Um, but all I could go out of is what I experienced in my life. I didn't experience a lot of racism or segregation or any of those things. Um, really, I've been hurt more by my own people than anybody in my own in, in other races, to be honest with you. So, I mean, far as, especially with blacks, I think we got to be more united, stand against each, stand with stand with one another instead of keep trying to tear each other down just to get to the top. And that's what pretty much happens most of the time. Most people are selfish, man. Like and that's not just black people, everybody. It's everybody just selfish and worry about themselves. Like that man, I'm not saying you should never be that way, but you gotta change that mentality and try to reach out and help people more. Um, and I'm not sitting up here saying I'm some so civil rights uh, rebel and I'd be out there and all that. I don't, you know, I'm pretty conservative. Um, I'm pretty private. I don't really talk uh, to a lot of people. I mean, I express my opinions when I'm asked about it or, you know, if I'm talking about it, like my man Don, Don Juan, Fat Man, uh, we talk every day and sometimes the issues come up. And like I said, we don't always agree on everything, but it ain't a reason to hurt one another and try to kill each other because you don't believe in something somebody else believes in. Like, I feel like personally, I, people just try to find ways to ostracize, ostracize. It's not even about race all the time. It's about like me, like, um, cause I'm sort of different or cause I, like I said, cause I deal with depression or other stuff I dealt with in my past. I feel like people would push me away for those reasons. And I don't got nothing to do with my race. So, like I said, people need to just change their mentality of how they think, or way, or this country ain't gonna go nowhere. Um, they take it down all these statues now here in Baltimore where I live. They took it down all the statues, but all that. I mean, yeah, it probably been needed to be done years ago, but it's not gonna change the problem. Like until we change our mentality, and that goes for all people, is this country is not not gonna grow. And like I said, social media and other outlets everybody have a voice now but everybody don't always use that platform for good so but you know my bottom line is like i said like i appreciate um um our athletes standing up people with power standing up but like i said it's not even about race all the time it's about money like if you got money then you're fine for the most part you know money pretty much goes head to head with a lot of problems in this country in my opinion as well. But, um,
but money don't absolve you of your race or your problems that you might have either. So, but like I said, that's why it's all about your mentality. You gotta change your mentality and try to be a better person and help others try to be better people. And that's all. That's all I want to say about that. Um, like I said I hope things get better in Charlottesville and everywhere else in America and everywhere else in the world. I got people um, that I talk to from Australia. Uh, it's a friend I have that lives in England, so it's not just here in America. So I just, you know, just I just preach for peace and um, hope people just uh, try to get along, get along and talk talk about issues instead of uh, resulting to violence or you know little petty stuff you know like putting people down or all that stuff just try to understand your fellow man and hopefully one day you know you hold hand in hand and just uh, live in this country like you should and have equal rights like you really should um, other than that I don't really have too much to say about it that's just where I stand with it like I said I'm not I don't, I don't follow politics, I don't follow, um, I barely watch the news at all. I know I could walk out here and something could happen to me, you know, especially where I live in Baltimore. So, I just, uh, like I said, man, it's, it's just about people mentality, man. You, know, you just gotta change the way you think, or it's, it's always gonna be the same. But, um, I just wish everybody luck. Um, and... Hopefully things will turn for the better. Uh, so that's my show for the week. Um, next week, uh, like I said, more baseball, NFL. Um, like I said, it'll be the um, fourth week of the preseason. So most of the games will seem like real games with the uh, starters uh, playing. Um, of course, Mayweather with Gregor to be the day of next Thursday. Like I said, I might be doing my show Friday, but like I said, I'll let y'all know. Um, by then or just like I said turn your notifications on you'll see it pop up on the Silent Day Assassin channel um uh, like I said uh, something else happened during the week um I'll definitely cover it um I want to say thank you again to all my subscribers thanks everybody for joining me every Saturday um once again uh, I almost forgot about the pick to pick them um, I put the information in the uh, description um, part of the video. Um, if you still want to join, you can. Nobody still ain't join yet, but um, I'm still going to play. Uh, basically, you just pick NFL games every week. It's getting closer to the season, so I hope um, in the next two weeks I get some people to join. Um, like I said, I want to give away a prize. I just don't know what or how yet. Like I said, I'm not in a position I could buy a lot of things right now, to be honest with you. I'm not working to be real with you, so I do want to give away a prize, some type of prize though. Um, don't want to just be for fun, even though I wouldn't mind just playing for fun. But I know people probably ain't gonna play unless it's something up for grabs. So I'll try to put that together. Um, but uh, thanks again to everybody. Um, uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, like I said, check out the box of the night. More NFL, more baseball, it's a lot of sports. Um, for today and the rest of the weekend. Um, so that's it for my show this week. I want to say thanks again. Um, I'm Troy West saying thanks always for watching. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the week. And I'll see you next week. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to go live in a few minutes uh, with MLB The Show. So um, thanks so much. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon.